Hello and welcome everyone to Science Era. In this video, we are going to look at sensation and perception um, uh, from uh, psychology A to Z, student psychology by V. De Winter. This section deals with the way we receive information and make it meaningful. It covers the processes of sensation, orient, uh, sensation orienting to and monitoring incoming information, forming perception and the meaning of information, organizing information and paying attention. What is the difference between sensation and perception? Sensation is a process of receiving sensory information from environment, occurs after stimulus is detected. Physical experiences based on reality is the type of sensation. Perception is when, in, uh, when we inter interpret and give meaning to the sensory information. It is high level of information processing based on the past experience and knowledge. There are five sensory systems that provide us with information necessary for survival and adaptation. First one is visual system. Visual system allow us to see, light activates the visual receptor in the eye where it is converted into nerve impulse that sends information to the brain for interpretation in the occip occipital cortex. Next one is auditory system. Auditory system allow us to hear. Sound waves are received by auditory receptor in the ear and are encoded before being sent along the auditory pathway to the brain. The messages are interpreted in the temporal loop. Third type of sensory system is proprioceptive system. Proprioceptive system provide people with information about their movements and orientation in space. Kinesthetic information comes from muscles, tendons and joints, whereas vestibular information comes from ear and provides information about head movement. Fourth one is Soma Aesthetic System. This system provides information about the environment immediately outside the skin relating to, relating to touch, pressure, heat, cold and pain. Last one is Chemical System. Chemical system allow us to experience taste and smell. The receptor for taste are the taste buds on the tongue that determine tastes such as sweet, sour, salty and bitter. The sense of smell, also called the olfactory sense, depends on the activation of receptors in the nose by chemicals in the ear. The olfactory nerve sends information directly to the olfactory bulb at the base of the brain. Brain is divided into four lobes. Parietal lobe, occipital lobe, frontal lobe and temporal lobe. Parietal lobe is soma somatosensory cortex. It sends things you feel, for example, touch, pressure, temperature. It also determines position in space. Occipital lobes deal with visual area. It combines visual stimuli into meaningful pattern, for example, words or faces or pictures. Frontal lobe involves complex mental activity and behavior, attention, Concentration, thinking, reasons, plan, all are the part of frontal lobe. Regulate emotions and behavior, voluntary move, uh, motor movements smoothly. Talk type tennis. Uh, can be damaged by jerky movements, behavior. Uh, if it is jam damaged, there will be jerky movements, behavior, uh, behavior, behavioral change and cognitive cognitive def uh, deficits. Last one is temporal lobe. Temporal lobe deals with perception of sound. It register and interpret auditory information. Left side of temporal lobe deals with language and right side deals with nonverbal sounds. Receptors. 
Certain cells that are specially adapted to receive information from environments are called receptors. For example, taste bud on the tongue are receptors and so are the hair cells in the nose. Receptor differs in, in their sensitivity. A stimulus needs to have a certain amount of intensity if it is going to lead a sensory experience. There is a critical point called absolute threshold which determines whether the stimulus is intense enough. If the stimulus is below the threshold, it will not generate a response. In addition to a certain level of intensity, a stimulus has to act on a receptor for a certain length of time in order to activate it. The intensity of a stimulus can easily be measured. For example, in decibels. Psychological intensity is hard to measure, but we can compare intensity of two sounds or two things. There has to be a certain amount of difference between two stimuli in order for the difference to be detectable or noticeable. For example, in a dark room, it is fairly easy to detect the difference between the amount of light given by one candle in comparison with the two candles. If there are 10 candles and one candle was added, it would be difficult to see the difference between amount of light provided by 10 to 11 candles. The, in the size of the increase in intensity that results in a noticeable difference is called differential threshold. This threshold is different from various sensory modalities. Transduction and generator potential. Transduction is the conversion or transformation of one form of energy to another form. For example, you change stimulus energy to electrical energy. Receptor cells are like all other nerve cells in that they have a cell nucleus and they are uh, and a membrane surrounded by ions. The resting potential in a receptor cell is called receptor potential. Reception potential converted to generator potential when stimulus received that receptor are more sensitive to. So that is the generator potential when receptor cell convert the receptor potential as soon as they receive the stimulus they are sensitive to. Next is transmission. The receptor cell transmit the generator potential across the synaptic cleft to a sensory neuron which can then send information to a brain if sufficient stimulus is received. If a receptor cell keeps on receiving stimulation, the generator potential decreases to prevent overstimulation. This decrease is called adaptation. Adaptation occurs in a receptor cell and is different from habituation which is a decrease in frequency of firing in the neuron. So decrease in the generator potential is called adaptation where it is pre preventing it for, uh, from overstimulation and habitu uh, habituation is the decrease in frequency of firing in a neuron. Monitoring refers to the brain ability to process incoming information very rapidly and below the level of awareness so that the person can respond quickly to potential important events. Monitoring starts when the receptor receives stimulus energy. The energy is then changed into electrochemical impulses and brain responds by comparing the incoming information with information stored in the memory. Monitoring ensures that changes in, an, in the internal and external environment are brought to the person's attention. In this way, the person organizes and selects information and this influences any conscious experience, action or responses that follow. One of the effects of monitoring is orienting reaction. The Orienting reaction or OR is the state of arousal that follows any sudden change in environmental stimulation. There are several indications that OR is taking place. 
Sensitization is the response to an increased stimulus. This habituation is the OR that allows us to become aware of potentially important changes in a familiar environment. And habituation is stimulus ignored. Responses are stopped in habituation or disappears after repeated stimulus uh, stimulation by uh, triggering events or returns if the stimulus or condition changes slightly. Next are the indication or uh, several indication that OR is taking place. They can include bodily sign, vegetative signs and sensory signs. Bodily signs are increased muscle tone and movement of the eye, head and the body towards the stimuli. Vegetative signs are the brief decrease in heart rate, held breath, contraction of blood vessels in the limb, decreased salivation and enlarged pupils. They are all the signs of vegetative, uh, they are all vegetative signs of OR. Sensory signs are provided by increased sensory sensi sensitivity and very aware of the smell. Once sensory information has been received, it is processed. Further, so the attention is given to relevant or important information rather than the irrelevant or less important information. This process is called perceptual organization. Three factors of perceptual uh, organization include characteristics of stimulus. According to the nature of the stimuli, some are regarded as more important than others and th this influences the way we perceive them. Next factor is the state of nervous system. The nervous system has to be in a state of readiness to perceive information. And the last is the individual's person characteristic and past experience. We interpret the information we receive in terms of our own experience. For example, a woman who is always nervous and who has had a bad experience in the past may get a fright when she hears a sudden shout because it may mean danger. But a woman who is very sociable and happy-go-lucky may feel happy when she hears a sudden shout because she thinks it is someone greeting her. Laws of Perceptual uh, Organization Figure and ground. When we receive visual information, we often organize it into a meaningful figure. Relevant information against the less meaningful ground, irre irrelevant or less relevant information without being aware of doing so. So figure is at a higher level of awareness, first to be processed. Then contour. Contour refers to the boundary or other features that separate the figure from the ground. The perception of contour often depends on abrupt change in brightness, color, which provide contrast. Closure refers to, the, uh, to our ten tendency to complete something spontaneously so that it has meaning. Closure depends a great deal on our experiences in the world. For example, if you see someone talking while holding an object next to his or her ear, you perceive that someone is talking on a cell phone. Last one is grouping. Uh, here on this slide is the example of closure. According to research at Cambridge University, it does not matter in what order the letters in a words are. The only important thing is that the first and the last letter are in the right place. The rest can be total mess and you can still read it without a problem. This is because the human mind does not read every letter but itself but the word as a whole. Perceptual grouping. Uh, the last law of perceptual, uh, perceptual organization. 
Perceptual grouping refers to the tendency to group stimuli in a pattern or a shape in a way that is most likely to help you interpret them. There are four types of perceptual grouping according to the following principles. So, principle of proximity is the tendency to group elements that are close together as though they represent a figure. Principle of similarity is the tendency to group elements that are similar in color, shape or texture as though they represent a figure. Principle of symmetry is a tendency to group elements in a way that creates a symmetrical or balanced figure. The principle of continuity is the tendency Tendency to perceive stimuli in such a way that the elements that are continue, continuous form a figure. Elements that are continuous form a figure. Principle do not only apply to grouping in a visual perception. For example, when listening to a choir, you can often hear the separate harmonies and rhythm coming from different groups in the choir. The world is viewed as a fairly constant and unchanging place and this is a function of perceptual constancy. Perceptual constancy means that we see things as having a particular size, shape, color and brightness irrespective of changing condition. Perceptual constancy is a spontaneous and we are seldom aware of it. There are four attributes of perceptual constancy. Constant size constant shape, constant brightness, and constant color. Constant color. Similarly, um, uh, our perception of our colors are constant despite changing conditions. Constant brightness. A white shirt may look slightly gray when you are standing in the shade, but you will still perceive it as white, even though it reflects less light less light than it would if you were standing in the sun. Constant shape. When you stand in front of the closed door, you see it as rectangle. When the door is open, the shape you see is trapezoid. Although you still perceive it as a rectangle because you know from the past experience that it is a rectangle. Constant size. This refers to the fact that the familiar objects are perceived as having a constant size as long as there are enough cues in environment to provide information about distance and depth. You make a judgment based on information in the environment and your own knowledge of size of the object and then you make adjustment to the size of the retinal image. For example, when you are watching a soccer game, you see the ball as a particular size no matter whether it is close to you or far away. This is an example of constant size. Perceptual constancy is actually a perceptual error in that the perception are not the same as retinal information but they are necessary for effective functioning because they provide our world with some stability. Illusions are form of mistakes in perception. An illusion is not a vision of something that does not exist. The object of stimulus does exist but we perceive an illusion because the object attributes are combined and perceived incorrectly. For example, a film. A film is a rapid sequence of still picture that we perceive as movement. Illusions are perceived spontaneously and even though there is objective evidence that the perception is incorrect, the illusion is still there. The process of recognition is an example of attributing meaning to something. Recognition occurs because we have built up a store or built up a store of concepts and groups which we use to classify information that is perceived. In this way, a person knows what has been seen or heard by comparing new information with information obtained from past experiences. For example, 
you are able to recognize a small rectangle object as a cell phone because you know what they look like but a person who has been in solitary confinement in prison for the past 15 years may not be able to recognize one once meaning is established the person that has to decide then has to decide whether it is necessary to pay attention to the information or not Certain situations, events or stimuli are more likely to demand your attention than others. There are internal external determinants of attention. For example, intensity of stimuli, size, distance, change, movement, contrast or complex stimuli. More intense stimuli. These are the strong stimuli like loud noises or bright lights rather than the weak one. Size, large, uh, size uh, includes uh, refers to the large stimuli rather than the st small stimuli like advertisement board. Distance things that are close up are more likely to catch our attention than, the, than those at a distance. Change, movement un or contrast. We are very sensitive to movement in the perceptual field and respond well to novel, unexpected and unusual stimuli. Complex stimuli. These are the general more interesting than simple ones. But the amount of interest differ from one individual and situation to another. Attention's internal determinant. Your attention will be attracted by something that is important or inherently interesting to your personal to you personally. Therefore, internal determinants of attention relate to aspects such as individual disposition, personality, needs, and interest. If you have a particular field of interest, you may develop a perceptual set that allows an involuntary focus on only those things that are the interest. A perceptual set is defined as a state of perceptual readiness that makes the formation of certain perception and action more likely than others. A perceptual set provides a kind of framework for seeing things and therefore influences the way we perceive stimulus, uh, perceive situation and events. We use the term intersubjectivity to describe the shared or agreed meaning of the ways events in the world are interpreted. In South Africa, for example, many people use the word robo when referring to the traffic light. To people in other countries, a robo may mean something different. With this, we came to the end of unit um, sensation and perception. Um, in this unit, we learned about five uh, types of sensory system, which include visual, auditory, proprioceptive, somaesthetic, and chemical system. We learned the difference between sensation and perception. Uh, we looked at receptor, transduction, uh, and generator potentials. Then we learned about monitoring and the orientation, orienting, reaction, law of pre uh, perceptual organization, four types of perceptual grouping and then we looked at perceptual constancy and its types illusion recognition attention determinants of attention and lastly we learned about intersubjectivity of perception thank you for watching if you like this video make sure to subscribe for more